Hello again. I'm Deb Johnson and welcome to Our Time to Quilt. Well, for those of you who checked in to see if my live feed was actually held, it wasn't. I'm sorry to say my internet service here is abysmal. In fact, if you knew, it takes me 8 to 10 hours to download one of these videos. So, I was a little optimistic that I could do a live feed. So, unless we change to cable or somehow find a better company, our little area, we're kind of tied in. Unfortunately, my service is awful. And we tried to upgrade as much as far as we could here. It's still awful. So, I'm really sorry uh, that I couldn't do the live feed. And I'd really still like to do it, but we've got to, we've got to work on this. All right. Um, so, I'm sorry we missed doing our shamrock quilt. Did any of you download it or start it? I hope you did. Um, it looks like a lot of fun. So, I cut it out, and you needed a hundred and eight little one and a half inch squares which was fun because you know what I did I went to my scrap bag so everything I'm using so far today is scraps leftover white background and all my greens are scraps from landscape quilts all kinds of quilts so it was fun it was fun to shop my scrap bag so no money was spent making this quilt <laughs> So anyway, all right, so I got these cut and set aside. Now I'm getting ready to cut the background. And so for the background, you need four 10 and a half inch squares. Got that covered. And also I was going to tell you, I've started starching my fabric. And especially if it's something that I really want to be more accurate, because often I wash my fabric, or sometimes even if I don't, some of the fabrics nowadays might be a little softer, especially the high quality. They have what's called a soft hand. Hand is the feel of fabric. And so I sometimes, I mean, I just buy inexpensive starch from Walmart. Um, if I wasn't so frugal, uh, I hear great things about Best Press that you can get from quilt shops and probably Joann Fabrics. But I just buy the cans of heavy duty starch. I think Niagara, they're right at the grocery store. So anyway, but I really do enjoy starching my fabrics. I feel like it just, it gives them a firmness and it makes it more accurate to cut and more accurate to piece. So if that's important, then I suggest you might want to try that. So today I'm going to cut these 10 and a half inch blocks with my June Taylor ruler. I tell you, if you don't have a shape cut slotted ruler from June Taylor you don't know what you're missing and some people say well I have them but I couldn't figure out how to use them this the June Taylor slotted rulers I'll hold it up and show you and this one I've had for ages in fact it looks it don't leave tape on them too long <laughs> don't don't leave tape on them too long because it sticks and I'm sure I could find goop off and get it off with some kind of cleaning material but see how they have they have these little slots, which means, you know, you have to handle them a little gentler because I've, I've, got, I've got some of hers that I've had to do little patches. And super glue and a little stiff piece of clear plastic takes care of it. But anyway, I love these things, and I have them in multiple sizes. So what I'm going to do is cut for you here. Normally, I, my cutting, I have a U-shaped, in fact, I'll, so I have a U-shaped setup with a little desk over here that I do my cutting. Then this is my sewing machine area, and then there's my ironing station. But for now, let's cut out the 10 and a half inch squares. So what I've done is taken my fabric... It's still hard to see. We'll move you back just a little. Sorry about that, guys. But I've taken my fabric and folded it in fourths. And I've already pre-measured to know that it's about 11 and a half inches to give me enough room to cut. So what I'm going to do, besides put on my glasses so I can see, is I'm going to line this ruler up so I feel like I've caught all the edges in. Then I put my hand down firmly. That's about as low as I could go. Okay, put my hand down firmly. Okay, put my hand down firmly. And then 
I cut. Now, the cutter you see might look a little different to some of you. This is called a Martelli, and it's an ergonomic, Martelli ergonomic cutter. And in case you're wondering, yes, I'm left-handed. So I have a left-handed version with a black handle. They also make right-handed versions with red handles. And Mark bought this for me years ago before my successful carpal tunnel surgery. I only had my surgery on one hand because I'm so dominantly left hand it was just a wear and tear overuse situation. And so they go in and, and they cut the ligaments that you know I had a huge nerve it had been inflamed for so long and in and out just had to be real careful and not use it for a few weeks but boy it's made all the difference in the world no more pain but I'm also more careful and so now this ergonomic ruler and it allows me a lot of people find they have to stand up to cut their fabrics well this ruler is so ergonomic that I can sit and cut because of where it places the weight on your hand. Now I'm just going to let you know this didn't cut through cleanly because I'm, of course, you know, I'm impatient so I try to do all four layers at once but we'll get it there. Alright, so I cut here. Now I'm going to cut it ten and a half. Try to press a little harder. Now I just noticed my ruler just jumped. So I check it again and put my hand down firmly out of the way I've been very lucky and careful. I have never cut my hand in my long years of quilting. I have like nipped a fingernail, but that didn't hurt. So, alright, so I got that edge cleaned off. Let me bring this over. One of the problems is I'm cutting on a temporary mat that's a little too small, so it it uh, is not well supported here, and that keeps it from it keeps me from having a really good cut. And of course, if you only cut two layers or one layer, you would get a clean, clean cut. Also, if I had changed the blade any time in the last six months, it probably would cut better too. All right, so I'm going to line this up, smooth it back out. Not distorting it. Remember, don't distort your fabric. All right, so I've laid it down. Now I'm going to line up a line here because I know this is where these are the two edges I've already cut. So I can take the line on this ruler, line it up with this edge, and then I know I'm square when I cut. So my first cut, I'm going to move the ruler over this way so I can get in away from this edge because it's some of the layers, the way I fold it, aren't perfect. And since I've got plenty of room here, all right, place my hand back down, and I like to make your hand like this, like um, a spider. And put your hand down firmly, and then, and I, one of the reasons I like this cutter so much is your finger goes over the top. That takes all the stress off of your hand. And do you notice that my hand and arm are in a straight position while I'm holding this? So that takes the pressure off of that wrist joint. But, oh, this one cut better. I tried to be a little more careful. So that did pretty good. I use the little inexpensive sharpeners too. I don't know if I have one sitting yet. Yeah, here's one. I, I, don't, I don't buy those expensive machines because I've kind of heard they're some of them, at least when they first came out, weren't that good. So I sharpen my cutter. In fact, well, I'll show you next time. I'll show you how to sharpen a blade. Because some people have these little kits. They're like $15, $16. And some people say, well, I couldn't get mine to work. So I'll give you a few hints because I have very good success with these. So next time... I hope you can help me remember that. <laughs> so anyway, okay, so I've got, I have got three sides cut. And here I go to make my last cut. And I've made sure I lined up with this cutting slot here. I'm lined back up here. And see, unfortunately, my cutting mat's higher than the table. So it's hard for me to get a, a good 
firm hand on this cut. So let's see how I do. And the nice thing, I think one of the reasons I haven't been cut is once you put this blade, once you put this blade in the slot, it's not as likely to hop the ruler, hop out like some can. And next time, I think it would be good if I had sharpened my blade ahead. I have several of these lying around, and I never know which one I last used for what. So, all right. So anyway, again, that was the Shape Cut Ruler by June Taylor. All right, and I really, really love it. So I think that's a really good thing. And this, oh, look, at, I just love June Taylor. I've had this a while. And the ironing side got all warped and ugly. So guess what? We popped it off. I recovered it and we glued it back on. So, oh, there's my name too. Put my name on everything. Because when I go to a retreat, I don't want to lose a thing. All right, back up. Here we go. Hi. All right. So, close your blade. I am guilty of doing that. And I've heard of people having it fall on their foot and they left it open and ouch. So that's not good. All right, so let's get back over here. So now I've got these squares done and I've got these pieces. I, in fact, here is the pattern. And what I do, if I have a tutorial, that's a lot to print. And like I say, I'm very frugal or cheap, if you want to say. So what I do is just cut and paste into my Word program and shrink pictures, shrink font, so that I don't have to use so much, so many pages. So that's what I did here. And then that way I can save it and then print it out when I'm ready to make it. So, so just remember that is take, go to the website that has the tutorial and you highlight, right click, highlight, and where it says copy. And then if you have your windows open, then you just go and paste right in. Oh, the sun's popping out a little bit. It's been a really rainy few, well, it's been a rainy couple weeks actually. So it's lovely to see the sun. So anyway, here we go with this and my wonderful copy holder that I got from walmart.com and best seven, eight dollars I ever spent. Here was another page that they had with the download. How generous. And Ber Bernina sponsored this. It was on the Bernina website. And Joan Ford, this tutorial. So thank you, Joan. And thank you, Bernina. Now, if you'll notice on here, I've written original on the top. Because when I print things out, anytime there's a pattern or a template, I always print an extra one and I write original. And that way I can keep this because I'm sure this is not the only time I'm going to make this cute quilt. It's really cute. What I did is print, you know, had another one printed out. And this one I cut out. I made the line darker because I wanted to be able to lay the fusible. This time it is heat and bond light that I'm using. And so I already have drawn my stems and I've drawn my heart shapes. And there it is, heat and bond light. Okay, and it's nice because you can draw them on the paper and then um, cut them out and you're ready to use them. And so what, what we're going to be doing, this, these pieces are for the stem. These pieces or for the side of the heart. Now, what I'm going to, let's see if you can see this again. It's a little bright. Let me pull this out away from that lamp. Okay, here you go. You can see we're going to make a little nine patch. Then these little chubbier pieces that are two by three and a half, I believe, they're going to go here and here. And then, you're going to take, well, actually, what you're going to do, when, once you've made, you've sewn the nine patch together and then put these, whoops, this and that piece on, then you take the heart and you're going to lay 
it on the good side just so you no actually you will lay it on the wrong side and press it on then you can cut around the paper okay because you know you'll have extra fabric you cut around the paper then you peel the paper off now let's say you can't get that paper off it's giving you a fit because sometimes the paper by the time you iron it and everything static electricity will take it will start in drive you nuts because you just can't get a hold of it or you're sitting here at the edge and some I sometimes I used to tear the edge of the paper but then it would tear the fusible and that could be a mess too so I had this wonderful teacher I love tips love tips and she just took a pen and scored the paper just scored it like that and then once it's scored you can just once it's scored you just stick your finger in lift it up and your fusible is right under see the fusibles right there and you just peel the paper right off could it be any easier I told her that one tip was worth the price of the class <laughs> so don't forget just score it with the pen all right so, I guess what we can do, oh, so some things you're going to need, and here is this little, cute little stem pattern, and so it's going to be the stem, and then three of the, three or four? Three. It's a three-leafed shamrock, so I guess none of them are lucky ones, they're not four-leaf clovers. You can put an extra one on if you want. It's your quilt. Don't tell anybody. So anyway, here we go. So we've got three of these. That's why you need so many of the squares. Because if you need three of those and there are four shamrocks times nine pieces, do the math. So I'm now going to take... Now I wanted to tell you another thing. Normally, I would not cut little itty bitty blocks like this normally when I make something I do everything in strips so I would sew strips of three different fabrics and you'd end up with a nice long strip of three different fabrics and then you just cross cut them to what you need and then sew those together so any little step you can save but this being a cute little shamrock and scrappy the more the merrier. I wanted lots of colors. I've got blue greens. I've got yellow greens. I've got black greens. I've got gray greens. You name it, I've got them. So this means a lot more sewing. But you chain piece and you just put, as Eleanor Burns says, put the pedal to the metal. And then once I get some of these sewn, then I'll show you how this works. All right, I've just got gray thread, which will do just fine. It's a good neutral. Now, speaking of that, though, make sure you have some green thread for, because you're going to do a very light zigzag to make sure that this, this applique, which is what it is, you're going to fuse it down and then go over and do a little zigzag stitch or blanket stitch. Um, you could even do it by hand. It's a great thing if you've got some nice green floss and you could do a blanket stitch by hand. But pick out, I got two colors here because until I get the shamrocks made, I'm not going to be sure which green I'd like to use. So, another thing. I was just thinking of it because you know I love tips. Um, I take the labels off my spools. I had a sewing machine repairman one time fuss at me. He fussed at me because he said, you leave those labels on? And I was like, yeah, doesn't everybody? You know, you want to see what number the color is and what size spool it is. You never know. You might want to go back and check. He said, no, 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 no. He said, what happens is the adhesive on the labels becomes stuck to the little post that you put your thread on. And the more glue that builds up will actually make the thread hang up and then you'll get terrible skips and st of your stitches. So hence, take the labels off right away so that there's not a sticky residue left. All right. Well, now, whoops, 
I'm going to get busy, put my glasses on, and get serious here. All right. Let's, let's do some sewing. All right. Can you see that very well? It sure would be nice if I had a bunch of fancy cameras so you could see, but you know what? We're going to do just fine. And like I said, let's do our chain piecing. I learned this from Miss Eleanor, Eleanor Burns. I hope I said her name right a few minutes ago. But anyway, so you just put this down. So let me just replace that foot really quickly. All right. Get my thread out of the way. The worst thing is to get that thread under this foot. And then it'll like draw up all of your sewing. So I put this down. Be careful with lining it up with those bars. I check my bar every once in a while. I have to kind of bend it back. All right, I think we're ready. Oh, another thing I'll tell you while I'm sewing this. And I'm, don't worry, I won't make you watch me sew all 108 of these. But I took a little three, well, let me see. This is a four inch ruler. And you see where I use masking tape? And I just taped off along along the measurement so that I would see exactly what one and a half inch one and a half inches looks like and that way you can lay it on your fabric and I would take and put the cut ends here and it just shows you then you just cut along this edge and along this edge when I first started sewing I had a hard time figuring out how can I use this big ruler to cut a one and a half inch square well, just remember to take your over large fabric, line cut edges with the tape marks or the, or the measurements, and cut off everything that hangs beyond the ruler. And then that way you have a one and a half inch square. So, for some of you that are smarter than me and been doing this longer, you already know that. But I like to make sure I cover all the bases. Because you know what? It's no fun to quilt when you really don't understand some of the basics or you haven't learned them yet. It really gets in the way of having fun. And that's not what we want. We want everyone to be able to enjoy it. So pardon me if some things I tell you, you already knew. All right. So I'm going to run these through. And... Okay, let me tell you, before I cut out, so you don't have to sit and watch me sew 108 one and a half inch squares, did you notice, that's not quite, look at that, it's not quite perfect. I think I got watching TV a little too much last night. So when I square those up, I'll have to keep an eye on those. I tell you, you never know, good part comes on the television, Deb's not look, paying attention. All right. But do you see the point of, do you see the point of chain piecing? See this? Let me do a few more so that you can see it a little bit better. Okay. Uh, just a couple more and then I'll show you the beauty of my pink thing here. All right. And yes, this is green. It's just very pale. All right. So now when I get to this point, then, and oh, you know what? I don't know how some of you who do this chain piecing, I get a kick out of seeing how long I can make these little kite tails or flags. But anyway, cut them loose from the machine. Okay. Then I bought this this little part I forget where I bought it from now but it wasn't but maybe six or seven dollars but I worried that it was going to tip too easily and how it works is I wanted something a little safer because I've I, I have impaled myself on these things a number of times but anyway so what I did is I just placed it on a wooden block and then painted it. In fact, my name's on it. I tell you, my name's on everything, let me tell you. I'm not going to lose these things. I love all my things. Whoops, all my stuff. So anyway, so I have this. Okay, let me move this back. 
and I set this here and then I just take and cut them apart just that easy and I wanted to make sure it was tall enough and I could easily see how to cut them apart so now I've cut them apart then I'm going to take them over to the iron and press them and I press towards the dark. Now let's say your iron's not right beside you like mine is. Then all you have to do is take your finger, take your fingernail and just kind of finger press it, take your nail, kind of run along. You don't want to do it so hard you distort, but look, it does a pretty good job, doesn't it? So I'll show you one without the finger pressing and one with. Isn't that neat? So just remember that if you're ever somewhere and you just it's not convenient to take an iron, you can do a lot just with your finger. Our grandmother's dead. So what I'm going to do now is stop at this point, get these pressed, make some more, and get some nine patches. And I'll, I'll definitely sew a nine patch because I want to show you how to make sure you get your intersections just right. All right, I'll be right back.